The first thing that would inspire me about her was the fact that she left her homeland in France at the age of 25, which is pretty extraordinary, to serve as a missionary here in New Zealand at the ends of the earth. I think that shows remarkable heroism and courage to leave the world that you know in order to help promote the mission of the gospel or the mission of the church in a foreign land. I think what would capture their hearts and minds first is her vision, which was quite wide, of her care for others, that they could see in that the compassion of Christ. And um, I think that would draw people to that, the care uh, and compassion that she showed so vibrantly in her life and never ceased to, even in spite of the challenges and difficulties that she underwent. Another inspiration that Suzanne O'Bear offers to New Zealanders is that she really was a woman of the treaty. She embodied the partnership that the Treaty of Waitangi envisaged. Right from her arrival in New Zealand, she wanted to learn the language, she wanted to learn the culture, she wanted to become one with the Māori people, as, as again, the treaty envisaged. And in that process, she, she learnt a lot of the, the spiritual wealth of, of Māoridom, she grew in her love for the land, for the, for the flora in particular, learning so much from the Māori, which she used in her medicines. But it was a two-way street as well. The Māori appreciated and loved her for, for her care, for, for the way that she offered teaching. And, uh, and so they, they, they always held, as they continue to do, um, Suzanne in, her, in their heart. The role of, of, of saints today is to be inspirational, is to be models of gospel living. I had elderly aunties who knew her in Hawke's Bay. For those sort of connections, as a, um, as a great inspiration for people, and for those stories to be handed down. And see, young people today are being inspired by her, the example of her life. That would continue if she's declared a saint.